Hello, everybody. My name is Balin Bene. I'm the CEO of uh, Bene Studio. And uh, this is the last workshop uh, of the year organized by Bene Studio. At Bene Studio, um, we are designing and developing mobile and web applications with cutting edge technologies like React, React Native, Node.js, uh, and Flutter. And uh, we are working for global companies uh, in the US, UK, Germany, like uh, Volkswagen Group. And we really like cutting edge technologies and uh, to learn. So this is why we organize uh, this uh, workshop series. And uh, this is the holiday season uh, version of it. Uh, and uh, I remember when last time uh, we, we held a holiday season workshop, Bali Dani was the speaker. And uh, after the workshop, one participant, Belle, mentioned that uh, that was the first time when she, she met uh, with uh, two technologies, uh, OneSignal and Heroku, and uh, she found it really useful for her. And after the workshop, uh, she started using it on a regular basis in, in her uh, professional life. So it was, a, it was a really inspiring feedback, and I hope that uh, today you also can learn something from, from today's uh, holiday season workshop, which you can apply into your hobby projects or uh, you can use during your professional life as well. Uh, today, our uh, co-organizer partner is WISE, uh, and, uh, and uh, it's already formally uh, TransferWISE, uh, and uh, we are building a Chrome extension together, uh, built on WISE APIs. Uh, we have other partners as well, uh, Dream Jobs and uh, uh, two meetup groups as well, React uh, Budapest and uh, React Native Workshops. Uh, and uh, today the speakers are Gabor Pavlic, uh, Tibor Sass from Bene Studio and from uh, WISE. Welcome everybody, my name is Tibor Sass and I um, work at um, WISE as a front-end engineer. And I've been in, uh, with the company for three years, three years now, and um, currently I'm working with the security team. And um, so we are focusing on the authentication part, uh, how customers can log into our uh, all of our um, interfaces, like on mobile and web. So we take care of the best possible experience. And um, so when Bene Studio approached us to create this, um, the, create this uh, workshop, um, I started to brainstorm that, uh, okay, what, what can we build? And uh, the basic idea was to, um, let's use some wise APIs that um, we can play with. So we have two sets of APIs. One is uh, rest, uh, based on a REST uh, interface, but, um, we have another set of API, which is uh, called webhooks. Um, so webhooks are basically just uh, events that uh, are calling one of um, one of uh, a callback URL that uh, you, you you can create, and um, we will focus on that part tonight. And um, what we are going to build is this uh, Chrome extension, which will display the all the events that uh, are coming from this hook. Um, but we'll, I will talk a bit about this um, uh, a moment later, but this is going to be the end result that uh, we are going after. So um, a bit more um, about what we are um, looking at here. So if this were a production application, the ideal setup would be that um, we have the wise hooks, uh, which are calling a um, server somewhere. Uh, on a specific URL that we configure on the on your WISE account. And then um, that server is, uh, the, our Chrome extension is connecting to that server and uh, it, it's monitoring uh, all the um, updates that's coming from there. So uh, the w, WSS uh, refers to a WebSocket, a secure WebSocket connection. And we are uh, going to build that. We could also do polling, but this is a much nicer experience. Um, but we are uh, in develop developing and prototyping mode, so we are need to introduce an additional step, which will be to work on our uh, local machine. We will need to add uh, an HTTP tunnel, which will uh, help us to use uh, the real-wise uh, 
UI and uh, our server server hooks, and then we, we can use our local code base so that uh, we can work on, on, our, on our machine and still connect to the real WISE API. So that's why we need an NGROC or NGROC. I'm not sure how, how we should pronounce it. <laughs> uh, so this is basically just some de uh, description of the hooks. Uh, so if you just want, if you want to um, deep dive, there are some API documentation for, um, for the hooks. Um, So, um, without any further ado, why don't we j just um, start to um, look into if we have the necessary um, um, requirements. So, do you have, so you need to have Angrok installed. Um, do we have the presentation? Uh, because um, you can have access to the presentation and you can copy, uh, yeah. This is it. Thanks. <laughs> so you can grab this presentation and you can copy code snippets from there and um, basically just uh, use it as your um, guide for tonight. Um, we also have the whole whole code base um, present uh, already created into into the sections that we are uh, going after. So we will have four sections. And um, so the first one will be this intro section that explains all the required uh, dependencies and the uh, tools that we are going to use. And uh, in the second section, we are going to build a simple server. Uh, and after that, we are completing the server. And in the last section, we are building the Chrome extension. So NGROC is a... If you, if you have uh, an NGROC installed, then you can just simply launch it with an NGROC HTTP 5000, and that, that will uh, have the effect of your local, HT, uh, local 5000 port uh, tunneled into a specific URL, which you can see here. So this is going to be your public URL, which is mapped to localhost. And we are going to use this URL as well to enter it to the WISE, uh, webhook UI panel, uh, but you will see that uh, in, a, in an instance, or a bit more instance. But if, if anyone r runs into troubles, we have, uh, we have all, the, um, all the hooks, all the payloads that the hooks are sending to our servers uh, in this uh, gist. So just, uh, um, you, you, are, you, feel, you can feel free to um, experiment with your own um, solution if anything goes wrong, but um, hopefully it will just work. Now we start, we start the actual coding. Uh, please uh, uh, clone this uh, GitHub repo and uh, start your favorite ID. Uh, so we can start uh, our uh, second section. This uh, repository, the master branch contains the initial setup, which is just a package JSON, uh, and some assets, some icons. Uh, uh, this uh, repo contains also branches with uh, partial and full solutions, so uh, uh, it's just a help if you can't uh, follow the, the full build-up build process, uh, but um, basically you will, you will not need it. Uh, so, uh, as you can see, we, we are using uh, uh, only a little mm, amount of uh, uh, NPM modules. Uh, one is uh, Nodemon, which is just uh, watching your, uh, watching your uh, code base and on any change it, it restarts node. Uh, the other two, two uh, uh, packages are uh, the Express and the Web. WS uh, mm, modules, uh, it, they will help us to create a, a server which can handle HTTP and, w and WebSocket requests. So if you, if you, start, if you, uh, if you clone the repo and install npm install, install the packages and just npm started, then you should see something like hello world. Uh, this means that uh, 
the index.js was running. And then from now on, we will, uh, we will modify the index.js uh, uh, with, with those uh, few lines. Uh, we just uh, uh, create an, an Express application and we just uh, use uh, Express.json, which, which means that we only handle uh, requests which, which contain uh, uh, content type application JSON. Uh, we rerun it on uh, port 5000 unless you, ha you specify this anything else in your end file. Uh, if you have any collisions, mm, uh, but uh, by default it will be port 5000 and uh, we start to listen on port 5000. Uh, uh, and then uh, one more line, we, we start the WebSocket uh, server on this same port. So uh, uh, yeah, the WebSocket uh, is uh, uh, so good that it can run on the same port like uh, HTTP. So basically the uh, WebSocket connection starts with, uh, ver with a very similar uh, request, like uh, an HTTP request, but it's, it says that it wants to upgrade to WebSocket. And after the server mm, sends back the, that upgrade is possible, then the connection is started. Uh, and uh, uh, we can add one uh, uh, from now one one uh, callback, which is uh, a con a connection callback. Uh, uh, it will run on each uh, uh, new connection to the to the WebSocket connection, and we just log uh, into the console that uh, connected. Uh, in the same time, uh, we get the actual connection in, in the in parameter and send back a, a JSON with event, with event type uh, connection. So, uh, and at the end of the file, the end of the um, J index JS just uh, console table that server is online and port number. So if you save that, if you, if you uh, save that, you should see in the console that uh, server online uh, port 5000. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, since everything is running, you can, we can test actually the, the WebSocket connection with your favorite Mm, connection to like Postman. Postman can handle WebSocket too, but if you don't have anything uh, in your mind, you can use this uh, web-based PySocket uh, tester. If you put uh, your uh, uh, put this address and connect, you should see that uh, that the connection uh, is established, and you should receive uh, event type connection message from the from your local uh, web server and web, web, web socket server. Okay, so maybe we can move forward for the for the next section, uh, which uh, which is uh, we will add one more uh, listen port to the to our HTTP server, which which will be uh, listen for. Uh, connection from Vice, from Vice webhook, and uh, we will pass the information which we, we will get on this port to the to our actual WebSocket connection. So uh, we just uh, increase, uh, we just add this listen endpoint, it's a post endpoint. Uh, and we just uh, log the request to the console uh, and we just send back uh, an empty JSON. Uh, when you are ready with this, you should be able to uh, 
to test this uh, uh, endpoint with Postman or something, your favorite um, uh, tool. Uh, just be be careful that um, it's it's a content type JSON. Otherwise, it's it will not work. But uh, I it's not necessary to to test it. Uh, if if you don't want to test it, you can just go to the to your Vice account and uh, create a create a webhook. Uh, when you create a webhook, you need to you need to specify the name, which can be something doesn't matter the url should be the same uh, which you uh, get from ngrock uh, with https and uh, slash listen so it will uh, tunnel it to your local host uh, i don't know how thousand and uh, and it will uh, receive that uh, we just need the ngrock because uh, the wise webhooks has the requirement that it can't use a simple HTTP connection. It should use, uh, it can't use an IP address. Uh, so uh, that's why we are using it. And uh, when you create uh, this webhook, don't don't uh, push the button create webhook there. Uh, <laughs> if you did it, just you just delete the webhook <laughs> because from then uh, you can't uh, test it. It will work if you get some money or something, uh, but if it doesn't happen in this next hour, then you will be not be able to test it. Uh, just push this uh, test webhook button, uh, and if uh, and if you push it, uh, it will console log. It will be logged to your console. You can check the message format. How nice is it? And uh, <laughs> you can try uh, all three events, just um, changing the button and test again. And it will fire another uh, sample uh, data to your console. Uh, OK, I, I. Mm, I wait a, a little time because uh, we had uh, it, th these two steps are not so big steps, but uh, we need to reach that point because from now on uh, uh, we will see if if the ng rock works, if the if your Vice account works, and if your uh, local server works. So if if this is okay, then then we are not far away that, uh, from the point when we can actually start the Chrome extension itself. So until now we are just working to because we need some data for our Chrome extension. Uh, let me know if you have if you see your event, the Vice Hook event in console. Okay, so we just uh, with the small uh, uh, small modifications, we just uh, we will um, send this event to, the, to our web WebSocket connection. Here on the connection uh, on the connection uh, callback, uh, we can add one more line. So we just save the connection to somewhere. Yeah, it's. Uh, uh, it can handle only one connection, so we, we always see that one connection there. Of course, in production, you need to uh, uh, you need to select uh, which one user is using that connection. But currently, we can just save it uh, uh, to the app object as a context, and uh, uh, in the in the listen endpoint, check if we have uh, any connection. 
stored. And if so, then we just uh, send this, uh, this uh, uh, request to the WebSocket connection. So after you put these three lines to the solution and you, you check again the hook, you, you put the hook button, you push the hook button, you should see also the, the message here in, the, in your WebSocket uh, tester. Yeah, yeah. So we just, we add one line just to save the context. And here we add this uh, app WS. These three lines. Uh, okay, S uh, so now we should be in a state where, where you just push push this test webhook, webhook button and you see the, the WebSocket coming here somewhere received and, and this full data. Okay, and uh, uh, then the section three is coming, which is actually building the extension ex itself. Uh, so we can have a small break. As we are now uh, diving into the Chrome extension territories. And what we are going to go through is that um, I'm going to just walk through how, how Chrome extensions work. Um, um, and then we will see what's required to make a Hello World uh, Chrome extension, and then we will just try out a small a API, which is provided for us by Chrome. Okay, so a Chrome extension is um, basically just a bunch of uh, JavaScript files uh, wrapped in a zip extension and renamed it to, I think, CRX uh, extension. And um, every Chrome extension must have a manifest JSON file. And um, that's, that's the file which describes all the resources, all the, um, all the assets, and uh, everything, how everything uh, connects. And that because that's your package JSON of the Chrome extension. Um, so what we are going to use tonight is, um, is two sections of, of the Chrome extension. Um, uh, there's a background JS and the pop-up JS. So background, you can think of this as a, um, as a client-server communication, a background JS keeps running in the background, and um, you can it can have a state. It can do communication with uh, external services, which we will make use of tonight. And um, I keep saying tonight. <laughs> and uh, the other section is the pop-up script, uh, which is uh, I think uh, so. This this one, which just opens like a. I don't want to reveal your last pass. <laughs> so, oh, okay. So we have this. So this is a this is a pop up. Uh, we, we call this as a pop up, and um, this can communicate with um, with our background JS uh, um, with events. There's multiple ways to do this communication, but we will um, just use um, some event listeners. Um, but net, that, that's not all that Chrome extensions can do. This, there's a very useful feature for them, so they can inject any script to any web page, uh, which it has the permissions to do so. And then um, you can communicate all, all again with your background JS, and um, you, you can build this um, event, event bus to just um, throw events around on, and messages. So, but we are not going to make use of to, uh, this tonight, but uh, it's, uh, it's really useful. Okay, so let's look into the, what's in a manifest JSON. So you can give a name for your extension, set a version, um, create um, some icons. Chrome will automatically pick the best resolution that's, um, that's required um, for, for displaying uh, the icon. Um, 
So the background JS, actually the background script, uh, is described here. It's, uh, it should point to an HTML, uh, and we should set persistent to two to keep the state. And um, the pop-up script is called browser action, um, and um, it needs an icon which will be displayed on the toolbar. Um, it needs a title, which is just a label, and then we need to tell where is the actual contents of the pop-up. Um, there are, there's lots of options, lots more op options, like you can set uh, permissions here, for example, if you want to um, create a um, Chrome extension, which only works on a specific website, then you can specify, and when the um, and when a user downloads it and installs it, uh, he will get a, a message or a notification that, okay, this extension can only access this website, so it's not going to be um, dangerous for you, because be careful with Chrome extensions, they can, uh, if there's no restrictions, they can access all of your web pages, which could be uh, not so good if they go rogue. So, um, to create, um, create the basics for our extension, we need to create a couple of uh, placeholders um, for our hello world. So we need to create the, the background HTML and the browser action, and we need to create, copy the icons into the Chrome extension folder. So you can see that um, I suggest to create a Chrome extension folder in your root and um, and in an SRC folder, you can just set up your own path, uh, which is good. Um, nice and old. Yeah, so um, you just need to go through all these. And um, the reason I'm saying that uh, you should uh, load it, uh, create a new uh, directory for the extension because when we are going to test out our extension, um, let me show you. So let's say you finish this, and uh, this is how you can test it. Um, on the there's a jigsaw icon on your on your uh, toolbar, and uh, at the bottom you will see that you can manage uh, where you can manage your extensions. And um, you should click load unpacked extension, which which is the way to select uh, your working development uh, folder and extension and it will just work it will work exactly as your um, normal extensions would but you can you can do modifications to it and um, just update it um, really rapidly and um, so if you have a bunch of uh, extensions installed and uh, Chrome might not display it uh, in your toolbar so you need to pin it and just uh, click this pin icon and it will appear in your toolbar, your extensions toolbar. Um, how you can debug this? Um, that's, um, that's a really handy way to do this. So you just need to click this uh, background HTML which you set and it will um, pop up a, de a Chrome dev tool and it will have access to all the scope of your extension and um, you can basically really easy debug it with uh, just like you would normally do. Um, you can either refresh, if you make any changes, you need to refresh it. So you can either uh, press this reload icon or press con uh, com Control or Command R to reload uh, from the dev tools. That also works. Um, yeah, so let's see if um, this part will work for you or is it, it's already working. Um, so the goal is to have the extension in your toolbar saying hello world and um, that should be uh, a milestone for us and then we can continue. In the next section we will just try to try to make, make use of our extensions background JS and we will connect so we will do the same thing that uh, you use to test your WebSocket server with, but this time from, uh, from our extension. So this is the snippet that you need to copy to background.js. And uh, what, this is done, what, what this is doing is that it's, create, it's using the, uh, the built-in WebSocket um, object from Chrome. 
and um, it's saying that every, on every message that we are receiving from our server, um, we are parsing this data and we are just logging it to the console. So every, every time any incoming messages will happen, will happen then this own message will run. And um, section three also, um, oh, so I mentioned that we will uh, be using an API from Chrome. So this is how it looks like. There's a global Chrome object, um, which has a browser action, and um, we, will, we will set the batch text. So what's, what is a batch text? Um, if you look around, look here, so it says two. Uh, so LastPass is saying two, and um, that number two is not a custom icon, it's a feature of Chrome. So if you just, if you say set batch text, you can, um, you can display any text as long as it fits there. So I think it sticks to three characters. <laughs> and, um, but it's really useful to see, to update some numbers. For example, if you have some incoming um, transaction, which we, you can add at the end of the, end of the workshop, you can display how many money you got or how many transactions you got. So it's, it will be, the end of the workshop will be up to you how you finish it, uh, but we will um, taking you to the, to the point where you can just feel free to explore all the possibilities. We will have some ideas at the end, but um, so far we are building our background. Um, sockets uh, also handle um, closing events and errors. So in these cases, I highly suggest to add these two event, um, event uh, callbacks. And um, so if anything, uh, if you close your or restart your node server and you're wondering why is it not working, um, you can just check your badge. And if, it, uh, if it's a dash, then you will see that, okay, if something went wrong or there's some um, error with your server, then you can just display error and uh, uh, you will know that something is wrong uh, on your server. And so if you got this, then that's really good because uh, we are making good progress. Um, however, let's, let's wait a couple of minutes if, uh, to wait uh, for everybody to catch up. So in section four, we will, um, we will be completing our background JS. So we will add the actual business logic to handle all the separate um, events that are coming from WISE. We will create the pop-up script and uh, we will connect the pop-up with the background JS. Um, and we will add some CSS as well. Uh, and we will use some nice vanilla JS in the pop-up section, because adding some build steps would be maybe not the best for this workshop. Anyways, who doesn't like uh, writing query selectors? What we are looking at here is that, um, so this is how we will manage all the incoming events. Um, it's a, um, just an array at the top. So it's, I'm, I made an actions array. And into actions array, we will push uh, objects which are coming from our, from our um, Chrome extension. I mean, from the wise hooks. But there's a problem. So we have a problem. So the problem we need to solve is that uh, if you check out these uh, specific events, for example, like a transfer update event, when something happened to your um, transfers, so it's like it started processing. Um, in the data, we have totally different objects, like um, we have um, right, re resource, uh, previous state, occur that, or uh, so for, for a balance deposit event, we have like uh, in the data, we have the currency, we have the amount that we received uh, in this transfer or the post transaction balance amount. So it's different, the um, data structure is different for all the var various um, events. So we need to work around that and uh, we need to uh, manage it somehow in a nice way. So in the actions object, my goal was to create um, um, 
series of objects with the exact same structure. Um, I, I made this uh, create action entry function, which will uh, pick up, uh, which will take the common. Um, actually, no. Um, it will know which which is the key for the for the in the wise payload payload object, and we will take that. Uh, Take that, uh, and based on that key, we will extract the value from from the incoming uh, JSON. So for that, I made this uh, extract method, and it will it will know uh, exactly which uh, which field to pick. And um, there's the link to the list. Uh, so you can you can create your own version of this. You can. Um, Initially, I, I just made uh, three uh, if blocks, but uh, this is a bit uh, nicer way to manage this because then you only need to uh, call this one line in your own message function, and basically the business logic will be in a separate function, which is it's also great for testability. Um, and very important, you should skip it for the connection. So. I use the event underscore type for our connection object because it will have the same structure as our as the rest of the incoming events. So it will be just easy to skip it here. Yeah, so I think we should wait wait uh, wait here a bit for you to um, complete this. Um, this part, and um, because if we are if you are ready with this, on the next step we will create an event listener for all the um, all the events which are coming from the pop-up. But I will get to that point soon. Oh, and um, there's this three dot, and um, it's it's a challenge for you to figure out the rest of the two. Um, to event, so you can either just log to the console the um, the incoming events or check the gist uh, with the actual payloads. So in the extract method, uh, you can see that I'm I'm accessing this current state uh, from the data object. So. You can see that in a transfer update event, um, it just says it's, it's processing. So it means that um, we are processing a transfer and it will arrive soon. Um, by the way, I've worked in the speed team before and 40% uh, the, of the transfers are now instant, arriving in less than 20 seconds. So in the next section, in the balance deposit event, um, uh, you will need the amount, probably, and the currency to extract. And um, you can just create an object in, the, in that function. So that's why I found it uh, handy. And in the last one, you can create, um, you can extract these active cases, like something went wrong with your transfer, for example, there could be issues like uh, the recipient rejected it, or uh, re recipient's bank re rejected it, or numerous numerous issues could occur. But hopefully, nothing happens. Oh, and what is what is this type? Um, it's now just it's my naming convention to to differentiate between the objects. So feel free to name it anything you like. Um, you can differentiate these objects. I mean, which which uh, widgets or just cards of events we will display based on this. Um, I will use it to separate and uh, add different class names to it, and then we can style it differently in the pop-up script. So for the next um, 
We just need one more step for uh, our background JS, and uh, if you manage to complete the, the event mapping function, then we will just need to add this um, event listener. So again, we are using a Chrome API, this uh, chrome.runtime.on message and add listener. And uh, this is basically saying that um, if an event is co incoming, then uh, we can check the message, check who sent it, which we don't care about at this point. And uh, we will have this send response callback. And um, any, we can pass any message to this send response uh, callback and um, the caller uh, will get this delivered. And um, we are just sending back the actions object. So if you can see here, this is, this is how we cre create this um, flow of, um, of data. Uh, because every time you are going to open the pop-up um, from your, ex your extension, it will send a message that, hey, background.js, do you have anything uh, for me? And it will just push back the actions object. And um, so this is, this is a, a, again, a visual representation of what's happening. Uh, you open pop-up HTML, pop-up.js pop will send an event, data is coming back, and pop-up will know about it, and we will render some UI based on that. Um, I think you already have this, uh, but it's, it should say now hello world, but um, I just made an, an, uh, a list, I called it actions, to, to make sure that uh, it's not confusing, and um, so this is where things get interesting. And um, this is uh, where we send a message from our pop-up. It's basically just, send, it's, it's, it's called send message. We call it get actions. You don't really need it, but if you want to have different um, messages or different actions in your uh, pop-ups, for example, you want to clear the actions, then you would send a different message. So you would set get actions like clear actions. And if you can, if you make a specific event listener for that, you can just um, null out the actions array and um, then if everything will um, work in the background JS. So it's, it's really up to you how you, ca how you finish um, it from this point. Um, so I just um, created a um, few um, UI and DOM manipulation functions which you can make use of. And um, I'm just iterating over, over the actions item and creating a list item using the message and um, adding it to the, um, to the list. But there's one problem with it. Uh, you might um, recognize it uh, while you are uh, building it. So there's one trouble that um, if you open your uh, pop up it will it will not update if you get a new event while it's open so for that uh, solution i didn't find uh, any better one but there could there could be uh, some smarter solution however we can just um, fire this event um, every 300 milliseconds and it will update our ui um, yeah so but this is not the pop-up, uh, this is not describing the UI which I showed you in the initial screenshot with the color, um, color um, event cards. Um, you can add these um, CSS classes, for example. Uh, if you see that uh, these, are the, these are the keys that uh, it's coming from the background JS. So, state change, transfer issue, and transfer received um, are coming from the background JS, like uh, here. So I'm, I'm using this type to, to make um, a unified structure for, for all, all, the, all the events stored in the actions object uh, array. 
And so whatever you name these, you can make use of in your CSS, uh, CSS files, classes. Actually, in the, um, if you check out uh, the GitHub uh, repo, we have um, a more complete solution for everything which didn't really fit into the slides. Uh, it's in the section four, and uh, there's, a, there's the actual UI code that I took the screenshot with. At the end of the slides, you can see some ideas which you can, uh, you can work on if, if you think these are interesting. So for example, you could calculate all the incoming events. You can, you can, add, uh, you can set the batch text based on how long your um, actions array is. Or you can play with the styling or improve the server error handling if you run into server uh, errors. Or for example, you could implement this uh, clearing uh, functionality which I just described you before, so you can just ex you, you you just need to extend um, the messaging uh, part. And basically, that's that was the idea for this workshop. Seems that you made quite a nice progress. Uh, we will stick around and uh, work on these uh, different implementations of yours. Uh, however, we are um, ending this uh, presentation and um, please uh, say some closing words. Yeah, first of all, uh, thank you very much uh, for, for the great uh, workshop, uh, Tibor and Gabor. Uh, and uh, thank you guys uh, joining us for the last workshop of the year. And uh, mm, I hope that uh, you could learn something uh, today which you can use uh, during your, your hobby projects or, or even in your work. And now we would like to share some pizza and beer uh, with you. And in the meantime, if you have questions regarding the project, our great uh, speakers are here and they will help you. So, so don't worry with that. Just uh, grab some pizza and beer uh, in the side. And uh, let's uh, meet next year as well. We are, we are organizing uh, the upcoming workshops uh, starting from January with great uh, co-organizer partners. This year we organized uh, together not just with WISE but with uh, Prezi, with a uh, with, uh, uh, lot of other companies. So let's, uh, let's meet uh, in next year as well.